Welcome back to the adventure. This is Adam, and today I'm going to go over a way to make DOS work just a little bit better than it already does. If you're experimenting with this at home, you may have noticed that typing in simple commands, like say we did, you know, dir slash p, just to view our files page at a time. If you make a mistake when you're typing in the command, you can't go back it just deletes whatever was already typed. The cursor isn't able to move back and make a correction. The only option is to delete it. So if you've gone through a long string of text and you need to go back and make a small correction to one thing, you're not able to do that. Like we looked at last video, you can use the copy con command to capture keyboard input. It works the same way there. If you're typing out a sentence and you've made a mistake somewhere along the line, you have to delete everything back to where the mistake was just to fix it. On top of that, if you wanted to repeat a command that you've already done, maybe I want dir slash w this time. So now we're in a wide format where it displays the files in various columns across the screen. Well, I can't press up or down to recall the entire command that I typed. I can press the right arrow on the keyboard, and it will type out whatever my last command was, but I don't have an option to flip back and forth through other commands that I may have also typed in the same sitting, whether it was type or copy con or copy or any of the things that we've already gone over. DOS doesn't have a memory of commands that you've typed. Well, it doesn't have a memory on its own. So I would like to discuss what's called DOS key. And that's it. It's already loaded. It's as simple as that. So now that we have DOS key loaded, let's try typing in that W command. Awesome. So now I do have the option to press the up arrow and it completes whatever the last command was that I did. See, I did do something complicated like before where I combined file one and file two together. We can do that again. Why not? Now, thanks to DOS key, I have a few options available to me. I can press the up arrow and I could see the really long command that I just typed. I can go back and I can change the file names. Say I want to copy file two. You'll notice that it overwrote what I typed. That's not the desired effect, but there is an option available. If we type in the DOS key command again, we can type in slash insert. And what that will do when we're working with this line of text is insert instead of overwrite. So I can simply make this file two. I can go over here and make this file four, and I can change this to file five. And there you go. When we type in dir again, there we are. File five is available. Now, perhaps typing in three, four, five different commands, it's not that hard to remember everything that you've typed in. But when you're typing tens of commands at a time, it is useful to be able to recall all of the different commands that you've typed. DOS key also has you covered here. Not only can you scroll up and down in the list of everything you've already typed, you can press the F7 key and it will display a list of commands. There they are laid out for you. You can also use page up and page down to skip to the first command or the last command, or you can use the F9 key to go to a specific command. Like if I want to go directly to CLS, there we go. And that is not the extent of what DOS key can do. There are macros available for DOS key that we'll discuss in a later episode, how to set those up, use them, all that good stuff. There are some switches available with DOS key, like we talked about the slash inserts. So I will go ahead and show that briefly here. If you need to know more about a file, you can type in the name of the file, which in this case is DOS key, followed by the space, the forward slash, and a question mark. And then that will display essentially a help file that explains the command and how to use it. As I mentioned, we'll be going over the macros feature of the program. 
in a later video. We've previously referred to the autoexec.bat file as being a collection of commands that is executed when the computer started. So you don't have to sit there and type everything in just to get the computer to run the way that you want. So because DOS key is such a helpful program, let's go ahead and add a line to our autoexec.bat file so it loads DOS key every time for us. So we have these better functions available without having to type in DOS key every time we start the PC. So this is another item that we will load high and the path So now when we restart the PC, DOS key will load for us. Unfortunately, every time the PC is restarted, DOS key loses its memory of commands that were previously typed. But that's also in part what the macros are for. Similar to batch files, Macros execute a series of commands. However, the macro is created and managed using DOS key. You can also use DOS key to create batch files. Let's take a look at how that works first. DOS key stores recently used commands in memory, so we can retrieve and edit them easily. The commands remain in memory until the computer is restarted, DOS key is unloaded from memory, or if so many commands have been entered, the oldest ones need to be discarded so the new ones can be stored. Because the commands are stored in memory, we can redirect them to a batch file. First, we need to type a few commands. Now that we have a few commands in memory, we can review them by using the slash h switch for DOS key. The output of the command can be redirected to a file using the greater than symbol followed by the file name. Now we have a batch file, but it needs a little bit of work. Let's open it in the edit program. Now we need to remove the command for looking at the DOS key history down here. Then we should replace test with percent one. Percent one is a replaceable parameter, so we can define what percent one is when we go to run the batch file. Now we have a usable batch file. Okay, so that batch file created the directory adventure, and it changed to the directory, showed the directory listing, and then went back out to the root of the drive, exactly as it's supposed to do. Now for using DOS key to create a macro. In some ways, this is easier than creating the batch file. We need a name for the macro, followed by an equals sign, then the commands we want the macro to carry out. We can still use replaceable parameters, but instead of percent one, use dollar sign one. For example, if we want to see a directory listing with all subdirectories at the top and pause after each page of results, we do this. So we'll start with Alt F7 to clear the DOS key history before we type these commands. D subs is our name, and it's going to be directory dollar sign one og to sort all of these subdirectories at the top, followed by slash p, so every it pauses after each page. Now, say we want to quickly be able to switch between resolutions using the mode command, we can use these two macros. And we can even combine the directory and mode commands using the same macro to give us the most results on a single page as possible. Uh, to separate the commands in the macro, uh, we use dollar sign $t, so it will look like this. Now to save the macros for later use. Okay, now let's do a quick test for each of those macros that we created, starting with D subs, and it's going to be on uh, C colon backslash DOS. 
Okay, so that's going to organize all of the directories at the top and then everything else below it, or excuse me, subdirectories, which we only have one, which driver. But it put that in the top instead of alphabetical or what have you. Uh, we have little, which is going to give us that smaller resolution for us here. And we can go back and see what that looks like with D subs. Obviously, the text is a little bit smaller on the screen. And then we have big, which is really the normal text size. It's back to 25 lines. OK, and then lastly, we have that uh, dir 43. So that's going to show us everything in the wide format with the smaller text.